Hello and welcome to another instalment of the Technical SEO Basic Series. This little mini series where I try to break down some technical SEO complexities into simple explanations as you're learning the technical SEO craft. So my name is Dan Taylor and today I'm going to be looking at XML sitemaps which over the years in my opinion have diminished in their importance but have gained greater importance in terms of data gathering and better understanding how Google is interacting with your website and getting data granularity. So first of all, what exactly is an XML sitemap and why should you have one? Well, an XML sitemap is essentially a list of your website's pages organized into a file using XML tags. Try to think of it more as like a roadmap for search engines uh, like Google, Bing, Yandex, Baidu, Naver, guide them through your site structure. Now, when you submit this sitemap, uh, Googlebot and other search engine crawlers will actually then start to crawl these URLs. Now, this doesn't necessarily guarantee indexing, but it is another accessibility path and identification path for them. Now, the quicker you get your pages indexed, and obviously the faster they appear in search results and crawling is an important first step to that. So, given that Google crawls your website anyway, you might start to think, why do you still need an Excel sitemap? So an Excel sitemap was introduced back in 2005 by Google and you hear Bing quickly followed suit after it was introduced. The good news of this is you actually need to create one XML sitemap and the general XML standardization for this will be read by Google, Bing and the other search engines. Now Google recommends creating one if your site is very large. Uh, it recommends if it's fairly new or contains a lot of isolated pages. Now, when I mean isolated pages, I don't necessarily mean orphan pages or pages with low uh, page rank accuracy phones of them, but large sites and complex sites can have differing internal linking and different website structures. Now, even if none of these factors apply and your website is quite small or medium size, so only a few thousand URLs, having a sign up is always a smart move to make all your content gets crawled and indexed correctly. Again, this impacts crawl, but there is that correlation. Obviously, you need to crawl first to then get indexed or to be considered for indexing. Once you've been considered for indexing, even if you fall foul and fall below the quality threshold, you can get that data a more granular level through the XML sitemap. So, if we speak about then media, now videos and images, Google's video and image search results can drive a lot of traffic to your site and can be useful in terms of brand discovery. So you can actually create separate sitemaps for these and at all add them into your existing sitemap using the special XML tag extensions. It's also important to use descriptive file names for them and, allow, and also follow Google's publishing guidelines for both images and videos if image and video are going to be critical to or important to your overall SEO strategy in creating brand touch points and exposure. Now, of course, like anything else, XML sitemaps can have issues. One common issue is conflicting URLs. So it's important that all URLs you include in the XML sitemap resolve in a 200, have a canonical version and not set to their index. And it can also be a conflict if you start including things like the non-WW dot and the WW dots of the main versions as well. You also want to make sure, like I said, everything resolves in a 200, so there's no redirects, there's no 404s. Even temporary redirects, there's no JavaScript refreshes on them. Every URL wants to be absolute and return a uh, 200. So if you're going through Search Console, uh, Excel sitemaps can also give you more granular level data on indexing across these co URL cohorts, aside from the general kind of indexing uh, reports. And you can also then use it to spot more kind of page level issues um, and you can also see what Google what sees as well through fetch for Google but moving into search consoles are completely different kettle fish for XML sitemaps. I kind of guess as a TLDR important in terms of getting able to access very granular data, uh, being able to access that kind of information search control but for most websites they're not impactful to indexing and they're not impactful to crawlability in what the modern search engine space is. So that being said, thank you for tuning in to what has been another instalment in this little technical SEO basic series. Please do subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this kind of content and also check out um, the other videos in this series and also the other content we're producing on the channel as well, such as the SEO huddle and other videos as well. And thank you very much for watching.